Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is a subset or a subclass. Now, after membership, the next most central relationship in set theory is the relationship of being a subset of or being a subclass of. This is importantly different than being a member of. Simply put, B is a subset of A if all the members of B are also members of A. This is very different from B being a, an element of A. We'll say it again. B is a subset of A if everything that's in B is also in A. But B itself does not need to be in A, simply all the parts of B. To see why, let's return to a previous set. A, which is the set of all sets of four chord, four note chords on a piano. We can define A as X bar. X is a set containing four distinct notes playable on a piano. In this case, B is an element of A, since B is defined as C4, E4, G4, and C5. But B is not a subset of A, since A does not contain any notes, only sets of notes. And B contains at least one note and no sets. Set D, on the other hand, which is defined as D is the set which includes the set of B4, D sharp 4, F sharp 4, B5, and B, not the note, the set, that is a subset of A, since all the elements of D are elements of A. All the elements of D are sets. Specifically, they are all sets of notes which are playable on the piano. So, the elements of D are all elements of A, meaning that D is a subset of A. But D is not a member of A. D is just a subset. Whereas B is a member of A, but B is not a subset of A. What this means is that not all the elements of the elements of a set are necessarily elements of that set. However, this does not mean that something cannot be both a subset and an element of another set. Take the following two sets. E equals A, B, and F equals X. X is a set mentioned in this video. Note that E is a member of F since it was mentioned in this video. However, E is also a subset of F since both A and B were mentioned in this video. So something can be both a subset and a, an element, but it doesn't have to be. So once again, E is a member of F because we mentioned it in the video. And E is also a subset of F because all of the members of E, namely A and B, were mentioned in this video, and so are members of F. To help understand this, look at the four sets to the left, kind of graphically depicted for people that need a different way of understanding this. They can be defined explicitly as follows. Q equals the set of P, R. P is defined as the set of S. R is defined as the set of P. And S does not have any members. And we'll discuss exactly what that means in a couple weeks. For now, let's look at the other three sets. Both P and R are clearly members of Q. They're explicitly defined as being members of Q. R is a subset of Q, since all the elements of R, namely P, are in Q. P, on the other hand, is not a subset of Q, since there exists at least one element of P, which is not an element of Q, namely S. Even though an element of Q does contain S, P does, it doesn't mean that Q does. Because Q doesn't contain S, P is an element of Q, but not a subset of Q. For bonus points, answer the question, is S a subset of Q? We'll answer that question in a much later video. But if that all was confusing, just focus on the basic concepts here. 
we're going to use this symbol, that kind of backwards implication sign with a line under it, to represent is a subset or is a subclass of. Class is, as we will discover, a broader term than set, so any of these things that I say set of, unless I'm explicit that it's not a class, they can apply to classes too. So this is really a, is a subclass of for once we get to the difference between classes and sets and class set theory, but for folks that are only working in kind of basic set theory or trying to just understand basic set theory without the classes piled on top of it, you can call that subset as well. We're going to define this symbol in terms of membership as follows. So we already have membership. Membership is our very basic kind of primitive notion in set theory. And a lot of other things can be defined in terms of it. So for all A and for all B, a is a subclass of B is by definition for all X. If X is a member of A, that implies that X is a member of B. So all of the members of A are also members of B. If that's true, then A is a subclass of B. In other words, for all sets A and B, A is a subset or subclass of B by definition means that all members of A are members of B. Note that this means that all sets are subsets of themselves. Let's back up and look at that carefully. All sets are subsets of themselves. So our definition is that all of the members of a set must be members of another set. Well, that holds true for all sets. All members of a set are also members of that set. So all sets are subsets of themselves. Our classes are subclasses of themselves. We'll refer to this in proofs as subclass definition. Because, like I said, broadly we're talking about classes. For people that aren't doing set class theory and just want a general sense of this, this should be sufficient. You can call it subset if you like, but subclass is the proper definition of it. Up next, the universal class. And we're finally going to learn a little bit about the differences between sets and classes. Whew. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. And watch a new video every single day for the entire month of October. And stay skeptical, everybody.